everyone let's continue on in our last video we talked about um, the document structure the HTML head and body section and we also talked about some simple text content tags such as the h1 for heading that's the largest heading there is and the P for paragraph so let's uh, let's talk about a few more a few more HTML5 tags today the first thing that we're going to talk about is a list. Okay, so a list could be one of two things. It can be a bulleted list or an an ordered list, like one, two, three, four. We're going to go ahead and test out two of these. So let's uh, let's add another H2 and do types of lists. Okay, and the first list. Let's start with our bulleted list. Okay, so. A bulleted list is called an unordered list, and that requires a UL tag. Okay, I'm going to put some space in here so we can kind of see what we're doing. So a UL tag is basically the box that the list is going to sit in. So as all of our other tags, we're going to have an opening and our closing UL tag. This tag is a little bit different than what we've worked with with the paragraph and the heading tags because in addition to this box, so keep in mind I said that the UL is a box, we're going to have different lines for each item in our list in the box. So regardless of whether it's a bullet or a number, everyone is going to have an, a list item. Okay, and the short, the tag for that is li. Okay, so each one is going to have a list item. So I'm going to say um, this is my unordered list item number one. Okay, and I'm going to close my li, and I'm going to make another one, unordered list item number two. Let's go for three unordered list item number three. Close all those. So you'll notice again this is going to be my box, the UL, and there are three different, there should be three bullets in this list. So I'm going to go ahead and click File, Save, or Control S for those that like to use shortcuts. And I've already got my page open here. If you don't have your page open, and you're starting a new page then just navigate in your Windows Explorer to the folder that your file is in. I like to kind of do half screen, half screen and I'm going to reload this page. So here we go now that I've saved and reloaded it here's my H2 and here are my list items. Okay so notice there isn't a space in between them they're just once it gets to the end of the list item, it starts over on the next line. Okay, so our ordered list, which is going to have numbers in this example, you can always change these. You can even change the style of the bullet in CSS, but we're not going to talk about CSS yet. So an ordered list is an OL. Okay, so again, I'm going to create my list box and I'm going to let's call this um, my grocery list. Clean this up a little bit, put a little space in there. Okay, so ordered list. These are the things I'm going to get from the grocery. LI, my list item. So I'm going to get bananas. I'm going to get milk. I'm going to get bread. Okay, there's my three items. You can have as many items as you want here in this ordered list. Let's go ahead and file save and reload our page. And here we go with my one, two, three. Okay, um, so those are two different types of lists. Your lists can even get, can even have like additional list items nested inside of them and that gets pretty complex 
just know that it can happen and you're basically following the same the same rules here you can technically uh, nest these together okay so we've got we've got our two lists now the next thing that we're going to talk about is creating links the web is all about linking from site to site page to page so why don't we go ahead and incorporate some links to our favorite websites and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and edit our types of list and change these to my favorite websites okay so I'm just gonna put a paragraph my favorite websites okay so my first favorite website most popular website out there Facebook okay my second favorite website Google because I love to search things and my third favorite website oh that's a good question what do I want to link to let's link to a website that a lot of people like to use for reference w3 schools okay so we've got our items here now if I click file and save refresh all I'm gonna have right here are just text there's no links because I haven't put my link tag in yet now a link tag is generally found as an inline tag which means that it is generally going to be in some sort of text based um, structure so for like navigation a lot of times it is in a list element it can also be in your paragraph and it can technically be an image so they're really you know you can add that link tag to anything okay so the first thing that it, a link tag and it gets a little confusing is the tag is called an A and the A stands for anchor so within my list item I'm going to create an A tag okay and then I'm gonna close my A tag over here now remember it's important to keep these tags in order so if you have an opening LI and an opening A you're gonna first close the A and close the LI now if I just save this let's see what happens reload my page you'll notice that nothing has happened right why is it why is it not here because I have not specified what this a tag is going to link to so many tags have attributes and attributes are extra information that is required for the tag to actually work so the a tag it's going to be href okay and href stands for the the reference to the particular URL that you want this to link to so it's href and then an equal sign and then quotes okay so I just pushed one quote and two of them went in there with my cursor in the middle so that I can just start typing now there are two different ways of linking to things the first one is using a full URL so the full URL for Facebook would be HTTP colon slash slash www.facebook.com okay and this the second way of linking is say you have multiple pages on your website you don't need to link to the full URL of that web page you can just link to that file name so if the, if the page was called contact.html all you would have to do is put in contact.html in between these quotes because that's considered a local file on your web server okay alright so let's go ahead and do the ones for the Google remember it's href a lot of people get confused by by that and the good thing about using these types of code editors is it, it has a reference in here so if you weren't sure what it was if you had a space bar it lists all of the attributes that are associated with that tag so you just select select it that way and I think 
it is w3schools.org. Okay, the other thing a lot of people get confused is they forget this little close bracket to the opening tag. Okay, so a lot of people forget this. So make sure that your tags have, even with that attribute in there, it's technically just an A tag. So if you write the A tag and then come back and put the attribute in there, then it gets a little easier. And your attribute values are always going to be between quotation marks. So let's see if this works. We're going to go ahead and save, reload the page. Now you'll see that we have our links in here. And if you hover over them with your mouse, you'll see in the bottom browser that they are linking to all of these URLs. Let's test the W3 schools. Okay, and I didn't get that URL correct. It's very important that you, okay, it's w3schools.com. It's very important you test these links out. Okay, I'm gonna go back two pages and I'm gonna go back to my site and change that to dot com. Okay, so the other thing that you want to look at here is what is between my A tags and my list item tags is the word Facebook. Okay, so what you want your link to say is going to be in between these tags. Therefore, try and make that link something meaningful. So instead of just saying click here, or here or something like that actually put the link around a meaningful descriptor okay what we try and do with building websites is we try to make our information is organized in a meaningful way okay so this makes sense I don't have to put on here facebook.com okay because people generally already know and it doesn't matter because you're gonna be clicking here to go to the link now one other thing that might be important especially when you're linking to different websites is you might not want them because you notice when I click on this page that it comes up in the same browser tab and basically you're sending them off of your website and we don't ever want to send our site visitors off of our website right so there's another attribute and let's push space and you'll see something that says target so I'm going to select target and the very first one is an underscore blank. And what that is going to tell it is open this up in a new tab. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it into all of my, all of my links here. I'll save that. I'm going to refresh my page. And now let's see what happens when I click Google. Now it comes up in a separate tab and my page is still here. So it's a good habit to do this for sites that are that you're linking that aren't on your original site. If you were linking to a page on your own site through navigation or something, you would not want to use target equals blank. That will get annoying very quickly and it will send your site visitors away. Okay, so you only want to do this if you're if you're referencing like a resource or something like that to keep your page up in a, in a separate window. Okay, that is what we're going to talk about today. In our next video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into some more HTML5 tags. Thanks for listening. Bye.